Hello. Hi. So how's it going? How are you? I'm doing really well. I, um, I'm excited to be here um, and to connect with you. I, uh, I was introduced to you, God, 2013, listened to you for a couple of years and then went off and, and did my own thing. But um, yeah, some of your earlier videos uh, were, were, I mean, all of your work is pretty, uh, you know, transformative, but um, there were some, some videos in the beginning in 2012, 2013 that I was like, I was like on the floor, like, oh, yes, this is all so true. Just like, you know, that awakening moment where you're like, oh my God, yes. Um, so yeah, it's good to connect with you now here. Wow, seven that's, years here. that's amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. That's an honor to, to hear. And yeah. um yeah, I was just checking out some of your work uh, just this morning and, and kind of getting really familiar with what you do and everything. And I think uh, we definitely have a lot to talk about here. There's like, there's a wide array of just uh, like Ascension material and everything that you speak on. I think that's really valuable and really important for, you know, like the yeah. world today. So thank you. Thank you for, mm -hmm. for being yourself and for coming and sharing in the space with, with me for this podcast. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So you just started the podcast or, or have you been doing it for a while? Well, we've been recording them uh, for probably like three weeks now. And so we've, we've kind of got a backlog, but none of them have been published yet. Uh, but by the time people are watching this, you know, obviously there will have been some published. But yeah, yeah. So this is, but it's a fairly new thing. It's really new that we're just starting it all up. That's good. People need it, you know, they're just like, they just need to soak it in right now as much as they can. Um, in any outlet they can get. So um, it's great that you're doing a podcast. Uh, it's really thank you. great. Yeah. yeah. No, thank, thank you. And now you're a part of it. Um, so Yay. I mean, just for, <laughs> for people who are just listening in, you know, can you maybe give us a little bit of a background, like who you are and, and what your work is? Yeah. I mean, I've been on this journey. I mean, I knew I was um, here to assist in this ascension um, process or awakening or shift at the age of 13. Um, and I always tell the story of like back then it was 1989. And a lot of us in the community thought that the ascension or this shift in, in consciousness on the earth plane would be like these craft or UFO ships coming and like, we're going to save you guys. You're ascending. Right. And we would like get on the craft and, and actually leave the earth plane. So I always thought my role was going to be literally like physically shifting and like bringing people up onto these craft and off we would go and the earth would sort of go through her ascension. Um, and of course now it's like, Oh no, we're going through this massive collective shift right here on the earth plane. Like we're standing in it. Um, and so basically 2015 is when I really, did my last sort of jolt awakening and said, okay, let's get to work, Lori. It's time to do what you came here onto the earth plane to do. Um, and I had no idea what that was um, other than I just knew things. Like I just, information just came in that I didn't know how I knew. Um, and I started speaking about it and sharing it. It was kind of channeled information, right? And then, um, I started connecting to these higher dimensional light beings and sharing their information. And it's just slowly sort of progressing into where it is right now, which is, oh, this is the actual physical shift in the collective consciousness that I've been waiting for and that so many of us have been waiting for and starting to share what this is actually all about. Um, both on an energetic level, like on a consciousness level, Right. And also on a very physical third dimensional level, emotions, thoughts, beliefs, behaviors, like how do I navigate this? But also how do I see the bigger picture that it's actually just energy? It's actually just consciousness shifting, um, but being able to hold both of that. Um, and that's really where I'm finding myself right now with my work and with my messages. And it feels so exciting. I don't know if you have this feeling of like, Oh my God, like, this is, this is really starting to shift like on a massive level. Um, but it's pretty exciting for me and to be able to really guide people through this right now. Definitely. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's very interesting that you bring that up too, is just even that, 
like this massive shift that people are going through. And I think that as a, like a, collectively, you know, just even from, you know, our global quarantine and everything, it's, it's like facilitating a lot of big changes. And there's either people kind of on two sides of the equation. One are like waking up and realizing, you know, bigger pictures and, and bigger purposes for themselves, or on the other side, you know, kind of really just being in fear about the whole thing and the virus and what's going to happen and everything like that. And, and of course, you know, it's kind of scattered around on both sides. There's conspiracies and, and, and things like that, that are like kind of really triggering people on both sides of the equation and stuff. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very fascinating time. And I feel like, yeah, like if we can get out of that fear and just exist in, uh, you know, in, in even, you know, I, I'd like to say love, but even if that's difficult, right, just awareness, just, just, just being aware of what's going on without letting it like trigger you, there's such an opportunity for changes. And I, I'm definitely going through that myself, but in a different way, I'm actually like um, moving out of my existing place where I'm currently living in about a month and a half. And I've been going through this, like, where am I going to live? And it's, and it's that feeling alone has cultivated actually a lot of these, just a lot of stuff within me of like possibilities of like, you can go kind of anywhere or you can, you know, live wherever you want to. Do you want to stay in this area? Do you want to go more to the coast of, you know, of Canada? Do you want to go here, there or whatever? And in that, I've also been, that's also like connected with, well, what do I really want to be doing with spirit science, with my company, with my team and everything? So there's so many like questions that this one little act and the shift has brought up. And uh, I think it's a really good thing. Like I've been feeling very tired lately and I've been having like talking about it with some friends and, and uh, I've got this sort of, you know, this download. I had a person do Reiki w with me and was saying like, there's a lot of energy inside of you, but it's like in, in order for it to come out, things have to, you know, change a little bit, but it's a really healthy thing and you just have to surrender and trust. So I, you know, as far as, as far as my life goes, this is some of the stuff that I'm going through. Uh, but I think that like even with the feedback that I'm getting is, is that that's not exclusive to me in any way. Like this is happening across the board and that's pretty cool to think about. Yeah. I think like, I mean, your shifts and, and changes are probably very familiar to a lot of people that are going to be listening to your podcast. Right. I mean, there's so much transformation happening on an energetic level in order to allow us to up level, to serve more, to, 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 do, to do even more of what we came here to do, even if you don't even know what that is, right? Even if you're like a bank teller or a grocery store clerk, there is still energetic shifts happening to each and every one of us, pulling us to make different shifts and changes in our life right now in order to be more prepared for what's coming right? Because there's so much more coming. And so there, this is all like a continual shift into higher states of consciousness to allow us to be more prepared for the next massive shift and then go onward and onward, right? So it's just magic. What's, it, it, it blows my mind what's happening. And that awareness of that you were talking about, like surrendering and the awareness of being in the heart if you can, and if not, can you at least be aware that it's bigger than what you are physically seeing, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's bigger than what you're physically seeing and watching and feeling on an emotional level. And when you can do that, I find when you can hold that picture, even if it's for like one second every three hours or 10 seconds, right? But this picture of, oh, this is actually purely consciousness shifting, lower frequencies into higher frequencies in a physicality, it allows us to surrender a little bit easier. And if we remember that every now moment is always kind of moving us into that next highest version or highest state for ourselves, that allows for a little bit more surrendering as well. But it's hard because we're physical, right? So we're, if we feel everything really intensely. And uh, so it's challenging. Um, but holding that bigger picture is key. I think it's massive. Um, yeah. I mean, I've gone through a massive transformation this past, well, since March, let's not lie, right? But like this past week, I went to Sedona. Holy mama. Every time I go to Sedona, it literally knocks me to my like knees. I'm just like, like something massive happens. But this past week, 
it was a really huge transformation for me and a really massive releasing of trauma and beliefs and programs and behaviors that I have done for so long that I've been working on or like preparing to sort of release from my life. And I don't know what the heck Sedona did, but I left like it, it's complete. It was gone. Like I I'm back home and I'm like, Oh my God, that shit is gone. Excuse my language. But it's like, Oh, everything I was carrying energetically, creating these beliefs and this behavior and all of these things, it just dissolved. Like, and, and a reason I share this is because that's the power of what we're in right now. We are in such powerful times that we can literally change just like that. We can shift just like that. We can release just like that. Um, it's miraculous what's happening to us right now. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, there's a, sort of a mantra that I used a lot this past weekend because I went through some big stuff and, and it was the, just the, um, you gain control by surrendering control. That like when you try to have things locked down, when you try to, you know, know, control every little detail uh it, it's it's so difficult to maintain that and it's bound to fall apart but if you let go and just trust and like let things flow through you um and just kind of like let things be as they are it was it even came up like i was in this like very deep meditation and my cats were just like running around everywhere making so much noise and just being crazy and um you know, it, you know, all the thoughts came up as you could take them out of the room, you could lock them downstairs, da da da, whatever. And it was like, you just can't control them. You just let them be, <laughs> right? And it was, it was a very minor thing, but I think it applies on a much bigger scale as well. I love it. I have, my guides have pushed me into surrender. I, when, when I think that I've learned surrender, uh uh, I'm like going deeper into surrendering. Oh, Lori, you need to surrender more. But I, Nope. You need to surrender more. What? No, you need to surrender more. And that surrendering space I have found where I literally just allow, I am just allowing all of it. Like it takes practice, massive amounts of practice to keep saying, okay, let go. Okay. Let go of controlling anything. Okay. Let go of controlling anything because we are so conditioned to be in control. Like, we, we, that's our, that's our nature as third dimensional humans is like, Oh no, no. If I control it, then I, then I know how it's going to be and how I'm going to feel and blah, blah, blah. But it's in that surrendered state where you're free. You're freaking, it's freedom. You're free. Like you're, you literally are in that flow state and freedom state when you are surrendering into every single now moment, even in the moments when you're watching yourself control right? You surrender even in those moments, right? Oh, I'm trying to control right now. Surrender, surrender, you know, surrender is huge. And there's just layers of surrender. It's like, are you joking? I've got to surrender more, just layer upon layer. Um, but I find that it's freedom. That's where you're free. You're like, oh, and then you're flowing and you're like, oh, things are just going to start. I can trust. You find trust, right? You're like, oh, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. There's, um, there, it reminds me of, there's a parable that I animated once, and I don't know if you've ever seen it. It was, I think it was called the parable of the reluctant Messiah based on the book from illusions from Richard Bach. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with that, but you know, at the very beginning of the story, there's like this parable about these like little, like river crawly creatures that are like clinging to the bottom of the rocks. And that's the life that they know is just clinging to the rocks. And there's this one critter who's just like, I, you know what, I'm just going to let go because if I stay here, I will die quicker than boredom. It is so bad. Just, and everyone's like, if you let go, you'll be tumbled across the rocks and you'll be killed. Don't do it, right? There's that old, old dogma sort of thing. And he's like, screw it. And he just lets go. And he starts tumbling. Um, and sure enough, he's getting hurt, you know, bouncing along the bottom of the water. But as he continues to let go and just like trust and surrender, the water actually like carries him up and he starts floating down the river. And so he's like, oh, I'm free. Like, I'm, I'm completely free. And he, so he starts experiencing life like that. And as he's passing down other critters, uh, you know, in the water, they're, they're, they're looking at him flying, you know, basically. And they're like, oh, the Messiah has come to save us. <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm no more Messiah than you. All I did was let go. And you can have this life too. 
and he so he like he, you know he passes on and then all of those water critters that he passed uh, they make legends of the Messiah who came, who and he will return one day, and they build a statue of him and stuff like that. And it's <laughs> and it's really funny showing like you know the the double mindset there of like you know the the old paradigm versus the maybe the new paradigm. Totally. And all he did was let go. Like he didn't do anything extra special. He didn't have any skills. He was just like, oh, that's it. Let go. Yeah. Right. I yeah. love it. <laughs> it's true though. Like every time I, when, when I do teachings or group things or anything, people are like, Oh my God, how did you do it? Or how do you, how do you, whatever. It's like, I'm not any different than you. I have all the same human, everything. I just am choosing. I'm choosing to do it differently. That's all. I'm choosing to, to step out of this like shackled way in which we've been programmed to be. That's it. That's the only difference. I'm not any more enlightened. I don't have any higher frequencies that I'm holding, right? Like, I just decide I'm not going to do this the way I've done it in the past and starting mm -hmm. to choose to make, choose to do it differently. That's it. It's choice. It's choice. And people are yeah. like, yeah, but, like, no. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> if I let go, what if I drowned? What if, okay, well, that's your choice, right? Like, what if I smash against the rocks? Right, right. Like, well, you know, God, you, you're so amazing the way you do it. Let go. You can do it too. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I mean, I, I would be very curious to hear your thoughts on then, like, for someone maybe who is, you know, listening to this, they're, they're, and they're wanting to let go or, or let go deeper, right? Because as you're saying, and I concur as well, it's just like there's layers and layers of surrendering and letting go and trusting and the whole thing just goes forever it seems but for someone who's just you know at the the precipice of having that letting go experience like what practical advice could you offer that might support someone in going through that and in, in like what does letting go actually look like like on a practical every you know day-to-day -day kind of kind of thing so the first piece at least, and I'm just tapping into my own experience right so the first piece in beginning to let go or surrender into the now moment, like surrendering into what's now, right? Instead of trying to fix it, change it, make it different, because that creates suffering, right? Anytime we are fighting against that which is in our now, we're gonna have suffering. Um, so the first piece for me was being aware. So becoming the observer was, is huge because you can't choose unless you're aware that you're choosing. So the first piece is, can I be aware of what I'm allowing myself to be in? So I'm allowing myself to be in this right now. Great. Second piece, which is the umbrella around all of it is, can I hold myself in compassion, even if it's a tiny amount of compassion, as I learn how to navigate this in a new way, right? Because if you can start, if you can hold some sort of awareness and then begin to hold, okay, can I have compassion while I'm learning how to do this? I don't know, maybe. Instead of beating ourselves up and belittling ourselves and whatever things that we say to ourselves, let's settle into a little bit of compassion and then begin to drop. So it's almost this feeling of, what if I just stop? Like whatever you're doing, Whatever, because the, there's a, there's a, when you're trying to control something or you don't know how to just drop into the moment and let it be, surrender, there's a little bit of like this movement. There's an energetic movement or there's like energy going, right? Almost like an anxiety or there's a, there's a, there's like, like the engine's revving, right? And you want to turn the engine off. You want to literally turn the engine off. And so the way you turn the engine off and let go, stop is to just be like to just, just if, if for one minute can you just stop what if i just not try to do anything and then in a minute later you can go back and start doing everything right and then you practice again wait what if i just stopped and didn't try to do anything right okay great and then you went back and did your this isn't a black or white right it's not like you surrender or you don't surrender right it's it's a it's a constant daily practice of, of releasing control and you take the tiny little baby steps observe 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 yourself i am in dot 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 i am experiencing dot 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 i am trying to control dot 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 i'm afraid of dot 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 right you're observing 
and then you have compassion as you're doing this. And then you say, okay, I'm going to practice surrendering. So I'm just going to stop. What if I just stopped? Whatever it was that you're trying to do, fight the feeling you're having, force yourself to find a place to live, uh, force yourself out of a relationship, trying to create a relationship, um, figuring out money, right? You're, that's, that's an active energetic movement, right? You're, you're going. What if you just stopped? And that means that you actually have to feel everything in that intensity. And that's what we don't like. That's why we go. That's why we try to control and do because we don't like when we sit in that which we are uncomfortable in. Hmm. Right? It's like, oh, hell no. Like when you surrender, you feel. And when you feel, you're out of, it feels very much out of control. But if you're observing, if you observe yourself feeling and you hold compassion for yourself as you're feeling, almost like a grandfather or a grandmother, right? And you know that everything moves, nothing's stagnant. That's peace, that's key. If you remember that you're not stuck in that which you are in, in that now, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, it doesn't stay. Because there's a feeling of, when you first learn to kind of drop into emotion, there's this feeling of like, oh my God, it's gonna stay forever. I'm never gonna get out of this, right? Um, so you just remember that it moves. It's, oh, you're always moving. Always, 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 always. So that's what I would say. Those are the steps that I would take in the beginning. I think those were, those, I still do those all the time. That's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's almost like it's, it's now, and I'm kind of also reflecting both on what you said and as well as on my experiences, but it feels like part of the surrounding process is an entirely different way of being or thinking about life like it's it's almost like taking the blinders off if you will or like you know having that that limited narrow focus and kind of opening to that expansive like you just described like everything's changing around you everything's moving all around you that nothing is in control right in the grand scheme of things um and living from trust living from from that like i guess that openness where you yourself become malleable to change so that when like if something is you know happening around you you're trying to make this happen and something else happens instead right that's that like forcing it and then you get frustrated at the thing that's different whereas the surrender process or the you know the living differently in this in this way is sort of like oh this happened how interesting right like playing with how interesting playing with how how does this affect me oh look i'm kind of frustrated well let's let's see what this is really about. Why am I frustrated? And like, it's like being open to playing at deeper and deeper levels. Like would that, does that resonate with you? Oh my God, a thousand percent. Oh my God. Like almost like you're just tumbling in the stream. Like you're just like, whatever, like what's coming next? What am I going to bump into next? Like, you're just like, that's the vision I was getting as you were talking about that. Absolutely. Like 1000%, the more we can it's rigidity. It's like, I'm so rigid. We're so rigid. And when we let go and trust that we're safe and anything that happens, we ha that we're safe. We're safe going through this. It might not feel good. We might not like it, but this is how life flows, right? It's like when I was on a, I went on a road trip in July and my road trip was like, I had this planned. I had my bags packed for like months. I was going to meet my boyfriend on the road. He was going to be in Montana. Like there was, it was planned. Right. And a couple weeks in, I get into Montana and I have this massive like download of sex trafficking and like massive hit of like go home. And I was like, excuse me, like I'm only two weeks into my like months long trip that I have packed in my car. And it was like, you got to go back. And it was really challenging to be in that space of, oh, my plan isn't the plan. And I have to flow with that and trust that. And it's an energetic resonance. It's like, it doesn't feel right to keep going. Something doesn't feel right. It, what feels right or in alignment is turning around and going home, even though it makes no sense. So when we start listening to our resonance, our energetic field, 
it's no, there's no logic to it, right? You're just like, oh, this is what's happening next. Oh, this is what's happening next. You move out of the mind, you move into the body and the heart, and you're like, I'm just going to follow energetically what feels like the flow of my energy. And it's never really going to make any sense. It's like, what the freak? Um, that's how I live my life. That's, all, that's the only way I live my life is through energy and not logic. It doesn't, I can't make sense of things when I, my life doesn't make sense a lot of times. Um, you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, no, I've, I've got that before uh, of just like, stop, don't do that right now. Or like even just simple things sometimes like don't, don't eat right now. I know you're kind of hungry, but just wait, you know? And yep. so even then that, even that is sometimes difficult to be like, but, but I, but, but, but I, it's, I already made it, you know, like I'm, I'm ready to eat the salad. What's the problem? Right. You know, like, and, and I, maybe there's, this is something that I've been thinking about lately too, is like, um, maybe surrendering earlier on so that you didn't even, you know, make the salad in the first place, or you didn't even start the road trip in the first place of having that feeling of like, no, maybe that's not a good idea. Right. Um, but maybe, maybe there's something also to be said of like that. Maybe that's part of the lesson is being able to go out on your road trip and then come back early or make the salad and then put it in the fridge or like, you know, like maybe that that's a part of the lesson of like, how well are you going to learn how to surrender? And I can just say already, this is a really good conversation to me because sometimes I'm like, I'm, I'm going to eat it anyways, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and I, what can I say? I'm human. And, you know, and, but this is a really good, you know, practice of just like, I guess, trusting the intuition when it comes through. And I think that's another question. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Cause I know that you talk sometimes about like higher dimensional beings and lower dimensional beings and stuff in your videos and your work. And it's like, sometimes I have that feeling of like, how do I know this is actually coming from like my higher self? What if this is coming from like a neg, some negative entities just trying to like mess with me, you know, or something like that. Do you have totally. any thoughts on that? Yeah. It's such a fun game we play. Right. Cause I mean, it's not physical. It's all energy. The, the higher dimensional beings are energy. The higher dimensional beings that may not have our best interest at hand, let's just say our energy. So you can't feel it. You have to really trust the higher self is an energetic frequency of you, a higher aspect of you being like the ego that is a lower aspect of you, not lower, just a different frequency, right? Of, of your higher dimensional consciousness. But so it's practice. I still, I, I it's a constant is is this my ego? Is this my higher self? Are these my guides? Like, I'm always juggling that. Always. Um, I don't yeah. hold, I don't hold the, the reality of darker energies coming in and it, um, seducing me in some way. I just don't allow that in. Nor plus, I would feel it instantaneously. But I do juggle ego, higher self, my guides, like what the freak all the time because there are many times where i'll do something and it doesn't turn out the way i thought it would and then it's like well what what aspect of me decided to do that and what i always fall back on is who cares who cares like if i try to figure out why right why did that happen why did i do that it's all practice. That's how I see it. It's just a practice of what did it feel like when I decided to do the road trip? It felt right. Okay. What part of me had it all planned? The ego. Great. Right. What aspect had me turn around? My guides. Right. So I'm always watching and observing what energetic frequency had me like make the salad. Okay. What, what energetic frequency said make the salad? What energetic frequency said, don't eat the salad? What energetically frequency said, screw you, I'm eating the salad anyways? <laughs> because they're, because they're different, right? You can right. feel that there's a different frequency. There's a different feeling if you start diving into it. And the more you kind of become like, I always call it like the ascension scientist, right? You're like ascension goggles are on. You're like, okay, I know that there's all these different kind of frequencies that I'm tapping into both internally and externally. And I've got to get clear on like, I got to get my radar real clear. 
What does the ego really feel like and sound like? What does the higher self feel like and sound like? What does my higher consciousness feel like and sound like? What do my guides feel like and sound like? Um, because it is like this, right? You're just like, sometimes I think I'm nailing it and sometimes, and what does nailing it even mean, right? Like, isn't it all just the human experience, right? It's all just the human experience. And I, I always say there's no wrong or right, right? I mean, I'm just learning. And if I, you know, I've had experiences where I've moved out of a place, moved into a place, moved out of that place in two weeks and moved into a new place. I've done that twice, right? And so it's like, was it bad? Was it good? I don't know. It got me to where I am. Um, did I listen to ego? Did I listen to higher self? I don't know, but I got to where I am. Um, we tend to beat ourselves up, uh, but it is a fun game to practice, right? Who, who, what aspect is asking me to exercise or not exercise, sleep more, not sleep more, go for a drive, not go for a drive. And as long as we're just sort of like, you observe and you don't make it right or wrong, right? Like, it's not about like, oh my God, I have to be listening to my higher self or I have to be listening to my guides. Otherwise it's not right. That's impossible. You're always going to hear ego, yeah. you know? Yeah. This is very interesting. I, I, there was a, a sort of a, um, not really a mantra, but a, a, another one of these like, you know, like surrender and letting go kind of ways of being phrases that was uh, living in the question. And I think that you really put that like everything that you just described describes that really well of like when it's like the, the whole, like the parable of the full cup, right? It's like, as long as your cup is full, there's n no room for anything else to come into it. And if you have that, just like surrendering, saying, you know, just acknowledging, I don't even know all that I don't know. Like I'm just a student of the, the universe, you know, I'm a student of life. Um, it puts you into this mindset of living in the question and then every time something happens, such as what you just, you know, who told, who, which part of me said, make the sandwich, which part of me said, don't eat it. What part of me said, screw it. I'm doing it anyways. Like th that is the question. And when you live in that, then like it opens you up to the answer of like, as you were going along, it's like, well, it's my ego saying, screw it. I'm going to eat it anyway. So maybe I'll listen to the higher self in this, in this moment, because I can identify at the very least that that's like the, the voice that said, don't eat it came from that you know like that that is a beautiful thing i think that like and and for anybody maybe going through that process as well like living in the question might be a really good you know something to just ground in so that everything becomes a question like why do i feel this way why why did this happen in the world what's the deeper meaning here instead of just taking things at face value and uh you know and that again can apply to like all aspects of your life but even just things going on in the world right like the Let's, coronavirus is a big, you know, subject of conversation right now. And it's sort of, you know, there's a lot of questions like, why did it really happen? What is the bigger picture? What is the overall agenda? What can I take from it? How can I grow as a result of it? Right. Because I think also, even in that, like, there's a lot of people that get really attached to, you know, the, the dogma or the story of, well, it was, you know, a planned attack by the deep state that are controlling the world and they're going to microchip everybody and they're going to vaccinate everybody and then they're going to kill 7 billion people. And it's like, maybe, I mean, certainly it's a possibility, but if, if that's the answer that we're going to take from it and then live in that reality, it limits us from like, how could I possibly grow from this? How, what, what can I create as a result of this change, right? And a lot of people, I think, probably just, tune out at that point and they just go and start watching Netflix. God, that's such a good point. Is so that's li, did you what was it living in the question? Is that what you said? Is that how yeah. you, you it's huge because what that what that is is critical thinking, <laughs> which we all need. <laughs> Basically. We really do. It's critical thinking. It's thinking, let me ask myself, does this make sense? Let me ask myself what what resonates. Let me ask myself what feels right, wrong, good or bad right? Let me, let me, let me in investigate my experience, not what somebody's telling me, not what a group of people are telling me. Um, but what is, what, what is my, what are my questions? What, 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 what makes sense to me? What's mine? Right. And that is huge right now because we are learning how to be sovereign. It's how do I learn how to separate myself from the programs and the, and the paradigms and the conditioning that we have had 
just by being third dimensional humans? How do I literally like, like, you know, like when you're um, like a magnet, right? You're like, like Velcroing yourself away from like the programming that we've had for so long. And you start to actually critically think you start asking questions. Mm -hmm. What's my questions that I want to ask? Does this feel good? Do I want to believe that story that this and this and this is going to happen, that 5 billion people are going to die and that it was made by the deep state and that we're going to be microchipped? Do I want to believe that? Because it's actually a choice. It's actually a choice because there are other realities out there that you could believe in, right? So it's like, what do, live in the question. What do I want to choose to believe in? It gives you power, it gives you sovereignty, it gives you strength, it gives you a voice, it gives you freedom because we're not stuck in one way of seeing what's unraveling. We're not stuck in it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and people feel, I think, like you said, they just take it at face value and then they go watch Netflix. It's easier, right? It's easier to do that. It's harder to critically think. It's harder to start asking questions. But that's what the waking up process is all about. That's what this is all about, is, is starting to come back to, to you. What, what is my actual truth? What if I actually had to create my own truth? Well, what if I wasn't a flock, right? What if I didn't follow the flock anymore? What if I started thinking on my own and thinking what and, and, and then saying, what feels, I always go back to what feels good. Like, what feels, what feels good to, to, to hold as a, as, a, as a truth? I like to see the fact that the dark is being dismantled. The dark is being alchemized. The light's going to win. Like, that's what I hold, right? I don't hold that we're going to be microchipped. I don't hold that we're going to have mandated vaccines. I don't hold any of that because it doesn't feel good. Why do I want to hold that? Plus, I know what's happening in the big picture. But it's always a choice. And when you start giving people that, they really want to fight against it. It's not a choice, right? They, they start to fight you. It's like, all right, like, that's okay too, you know? But it is. And that thing, standing in the question is, is, is really, really, it's an easy way to start to find your sovereignty. It's an mm -hmm. easy way to start to find your sovereignty, mm -hmm. you know? I, um, I remember watching one of the videos, uh, I think it was your most recent one, uh, just earlier today, that was called uh, Don't Be Afraid or Do Not Fear or something like that. Uh, oh, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, and I wanted to ask you about that, just because, you know, you described, I thought, really well, the what was going on on like an energetic level, looking at just like, you've got higher frequencies, you've got lower frequencies, and like all of the chaos of this even of this year and all of the things that are coming up and like Epstein and like this whole thing was all, um, you know, it's, it's like this necessary, just in order to be healed, it has to come into the light. And so it is a chaotic time. There is a lot to be being, being revealed, but it is this transmutation, this density that is being shined light upon to go, Oh, look, a giant garbage mess. We have to clean that. And it's starting to be, you know, like healed as a result of the collective awareness being on it. And you just kind of touched upon it a moment ago too, with, you know, the last thing that you said, and I was wondering too, if you could go maybe a little bit more deeper into that and explain that, how does that work? And, um, and like, I mean, it, it does relate. It must, I mean, it's, it's like that trust and surrender to that picture, but we're also, we have to be the ones to do it, right? Like clear it out within us. Yeah. I mean, we have to, we're in the, I, I keep using this analogy of being in the arena because it just feels so perfect. Like we're in this, like you can't close your eyes, right? Like it's happening. You're, you can absolutely turn your back, you know, and shut it out, but you're still standing in the arena. It's, you're still gonna unfortunately or fortunately watch what's unraveling. And I have found that, again, we're physical in nature, but it's energy, right? So you have to balance both, meaning in the very mundane sort of everyday experience, you're gonna have emotions, thoughts, beliefs, behaviors, you're gonna see things, hear things, watch things. That's the physical, right? And so, you're going to watch the explosions happening. You're going to watch, 
the sex trafficking unravel. You're going to watch the dismantling of governmental systems, right? You're going to see that. It's physical. The energetic piece is its consciousness. So what's happening is there is a massive collective shift in consciousness. And so although we see it physically, Epstein going to jail and being murdered in his prison, right? Uh, Trump doing whatever Trump's doing. We see these things physically, but it is consciousness being played out and it is consciousness that is spinning in a lower frequency. We call it dark or we call it density. It's just spinning. It's consciousness spinning slower than other consciousnesses. Love, peace, joy, those consciousnesses spin faster, lighter. Uh, greed, rape, murder, torture, those are consciousnesses spinning slower. And so what you're watching is slower consciousnesses, being light being shined on them, if that's even a word, shined, right? Because we're holding higher frequencies. The earth is holding higher frequencies. More light is coming down. More light is now shining on that or pulling that density up so that it can be cleared, alchemized, transformed. And so more of it is going to be seen. More of it is going to be felt. More of it is going to be experienced by us. So we are energetically seeing it, feeling it, experiencing it, and we're also physically seeing it. But what happens is we, because we don't quite understand what's happening, a lot of us think that we're going to hell in a handbasket. Like, oh my God, it's getting worse. It's like, no, it's getting better. It's getting better. The more horrific it looks, the, the faster it's clearing. Because for whatever reason, we focus on the dark more than the light, right? But there's much more light on the earth plane and in human bodies right now than ever before. And because of that, that density or that lower consciousness is literally being like kind of almost like um like spun up so that all of a sudden it comes to the surface like holy shit all this light this high frequency light is spinning this dark lower frequency density up and it's like whoosh, whoosh, here it comes holy cow there's a massive sex trafficking ring that's so huge that people aren't even going to be able to look at it right wow it's like what the heck so there's that's consciousness that's consciousness that's real low frequency that's just going to alchemize, right? And there's a many different ways that we can do it. And you will resonate the way that feels right to you in terms of how you want to go through this. There's no right or wrong, which was the other message that came in this morning, right? Like you could be in, in a lotus meditation for 17 days if that's what you need, right? Or you can go out and protest and, and say no more or anything in between. You're still, you're still assisting the human collective um, just by being here and, 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 and recognizing what's happening. It really is, that, that, that in and of itself is enough, believe it or not, right? Being in the arena is enough. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. It's very well said. I'm it's just fascinating. To just be with it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, I mean, and the way that like that perspective as well really kind of eliminates a lot of the you know the judgment that could come along with it because it can it can create i mean there's no question like it's a very you know um the revealing of all of that density and just seeing it and being aware of it is just like dear god that's disgusting that this is happening you know and um i you know it can make a lot of people very frustrated and angry and and even violent towards it and on some level of course like you know justice has to be served this has to be transmuted it has to be changed it has to be resolved so that it's no longer exists but like just looking at it in the lens that you just described just takes i mean it just takes all that out of the the equation and it's just like it's just returning to that point of awareness returning to that point of like we're just looking we're just seeing Oh, like, it, you know, it's like if aliens were to come and be like watching us from their spacecraft, like, would they be like these stupid humans? Or they'd be like, oh, okay, so they've got a binge big mess over here, but it's starting to be seen and they're going to heal this. Oh, cool. Interesting. You know, it's just like a, a top down, very high level perspective. That's the perspective I have because that's the perspective they give me. So I literally see through their eyes. And that's kind of how I teach is from their, their perspective, 
um, which is why it feels very neutral because it's not my perspective. Like if Lori were to be talking, I'd be like, those mother, you know, I'd be really like charged about it. Um, but I speak and teach from their perspective, which is this like, it's a very neutral sort of like, let's, let's look at this for what's actually happening. But also let's honor the fact that we're human. Let's honor the fact that we're going to get angry and resentful and sick. And, 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 and we're going to maybe have arguments with people have anxiety, stress, fear, worry, whatever it is, that's okay. Cause that's actually part of being in the arena. Like you can't escape the emotion around how you may feel. And if you allow your, that to be okay, and hold, try to start holding that bigger picture, it will be a little bit easier to kind of navigate it, I think. Mm. Because it, it is going to get crazier out there. Um, so holding the perspective from a, like a physics level, like an energetic level of what's happening, can kind of calm you a little bit when you're in the midst of some sort of like angst or emotion that's sort of um, overriding you. If in that moment you can also say, hey, wait, 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 this is consciousness. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, this is consciousness. This is just consciousness shifting. Um, boom, you get that higher perspective. You see the lens. You're not making your human experience wrong. You're not making your emotions wrong. You're just like shifting into a different perspective for a moment. And then you get to come back down and be human and, you know, emotional and all of that. Um, that's yeah. really helped me a lot. Um, hmm. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, I really want to ask you now about, uh, I actually did have channeling on my list to speak with you uh, today. And, you know, you just said like, that's who, you know, they give me. And I'm, I'm just really curious, you know, especially, you know, the subject of ETs is a very big one and, and everything like that. And I'm very curious, like in your experiences, who is they? So I, I specifically work with or connect with or receive messages from a, a council of 12 light beings. And I like to call light beings like higher consciousness, just like you and I are higher consciousness, right? We're just, we just happen to be in a body, right? So we feel trapped and we don't really recognize exactly who we are, but we are higher consciousness. So all ETs or, you know, UF or, uh, you know, like Palladians, Octarians, whatever you want to name them, they're just higher consciousness, right? And so these are 12 higher consciousness light beings that are in a council within the Galactic Federation of Light. And I like to call the Galactic Federation of Light sort of Earth's guardians, um, sort of watching over the entire process of Earth's ascension, starting millions of years ago when she began this sort of experiment and journey. And so I didn't know I was connecting with these, this council until I was in um, Machu Picchu in 2017. All of a sudden they just came in and it was like, oh, here's who we are and this is the information and we're not going anywhere and, and this, is, this is your work on the earth. And I'm like, oh, geez, okay. And then they just were always there and I always hear them and any message I get is from their perspective. Um, and I've really learned how to sort of get out of the way. It's been a practice, but sort of let my ego sort of drop because what happens when I channel sometimes is like, oh my God, does this sound okay? Are people going to think I'm crazy? Um, how are they going to take it? Is this really what people need to hear? Like that ego will come in, but I've learned how to sort of, as soon as the messages start to drop in, I just drop out. I kind of like exit stage and then I just let the energy flow, but it still sounds like me. So it's not like I'm channeling in a way that other channelers do where it sounds like a different voice or right. it just sounds like me. Right. But it's not me. That's what's so interesting. Cause like, if you met me and like you saw me on my regular day, you'd be like, that's not the chick I see on those videos. Like she seems like she's got this awesome high perspective and I do, but I'm also very emotional. I also can get very angry and upset and rageful and like, you know, but when I'm in work mode channeling, it's like, it's that perspective that comes in and it's from these beings that are like, Hey, tell the humans this, Hey, tell the humans, remind them of this. Okay. Now you need to remind them of this. So it's not me, it's them. 
And of course, I also connect with a lot of different other um, kind of galactic or higher dimensional beings. Um, but the but this council is really the ones that are like, we're dialed into you and you're going to share as humanity goes through this. It's a, it's a lot of a remind a remembrance because all of us remember this. We just forgot it. We all know what's happening. We all remember that this was going to happen. It's just, we completely forgot. And then we're like, Oh wait, really? How do I know that's true? How can I trust that? Like, how do I navigate this? Like, you know, that shrouded dense third dimensional film is on us where we're like, what the freak? And so they're just like, remind, 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 remind. Um, and then when the message comes out, it either resonates. Oh yeah, that feels right. Or it doesn't. Right. No, yeah. she's crazy. She's lost her mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, you know, because like I, I'm working very closely with um, actually like my writer and researcher on really understanding how like the dimensions work from a both scientific and spiritual perspective, you know, like the quantum and the relative and everything like this, because this is just like, a, it's a big conundrum in science, like how the quantum world fits into, you know, the, the, you know, regular world that we all live in the standard model world or whatever, what have you. Um, and, uh, and, and then also, of course, there's this big question of like, you know, dark matter, dark energy, like, you know, what is, what are those worlds? Where are they? And I'm very curious to ask you, like, do you have any awareness of like, you know, when you say they're in a different dimension, you know, again, again, because the, the scientific or the mathematic understanding of dimensions is different from like the spiritual understanding, which is usually related more with like planes or frequencies, right? And uh, do you have any understanding of like where that, you know, that council or these, these higher dimensional beings would be in a more scientific way of looking at it? God, that's a really good question. I mean, I always see it the way they show it to me. So it's like, um, it's, it's all right. It's all right here. Right. So it's not anywhere other than right here, but mm -hmm. it's, in terms of a dimensional field, they are holding themselves energetically in what would be sort of a seventh dimensional sort of plane or frequency, although they are existing in a higher frequency than that. They bring themselves down into a little bit lower frequency to exist in this sort of like field that's what we would call seventh dimension maybe. And it's easier for the third dimensional human form to access it. I have no idea what science says about dimensions um, whatsoever or how they even describe dimensions. All I can do is base it on how I experience dimensions and it's, it's how I, how I experience it on a frequency level. So if, if I am tapping into like a 10th dimensional frequency, it will feel almost like it's further away. Like it's, it's almost like, um, it's, it would be, it will be a little bit brighter or less form like, and almost like you like, you've got a tunnel, right? And you're on one end and they're on the other. And as a, a, a being or a consciousness moves down into kind of lower dimensional fields, I can feel them a little bit easier or I can access it easier. Um, and so that's how I know what dimensional field certain beings are in is the, the, the kind of energetic connection that I have to their energy. Um, does that make sense at all? Yeah, at least, I, I mean, sorry. Yeah, please. Well, because it's hard to explain the quantum field I mean, I don't, again, I don't know how science explains it, but the only way that I can explain it is it's all right here in this room. It's, it's all right here. It isn't anywhere else than right here. So I can tap into anything right here, any dimensional field, if I can access it energetically. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's very, very interesting because there is this like, uh, you know, modern, the, the, the modern um, publicly socially acknowledged sciences will, I, you know, they're very limited in how they express things because they only go up to as far as what they can actually perceive. So modern science 
generally doesn't perceive anything faster than the speed of light, for example. So like, you, you know, you'll hear like Neil deGrasse Tyson or whoever talking about how like the fastest thing, period, that's that is light and nothing can go faster, right? But then you, you listen to people that who are a little bit more on the fringe side of things like, uh, like Dr. Stephen Greer, who you know has done? He he founded CSETI and the the Disclosure Project and all of these things with like actual UFOs. And he's like explaining that straight up, all of these UFOs and these you know these other other um, species who are here, even physically, it's it's just traveling via light is too slow. So what he explains is that there is like like you know we broke the sound barrier as humans, and that was a big deal. Well, the light barrier is an even bigger deal because once you pass the light barrier, you end up in these multiphasic resonant dimensions. Uh, much like what, you, what you're saying is like, they're all stacked on top of each other, but they like hook into consciousness or they are driven by consciousness in some way. And that um, when you pass that light barrier, you can travel throughout the galaxy and the universe at phenomenal speeds, you know, like instantaneously, um, if not, yeah, like, like very fast, if not instantaneously. And it's all, you know, a result of reaching these levels. But because modern science today can't or haven't publicly acknowledged that we've, you know, got there, uh, you know, that's considered, it's not science. It doesn't really exist, right? So, so there is a little bit of a, there is a little bit of a, a challenge there in getting that idea across to the mainstream. Totally. Well, that was the word I was looking for. But, but basically that like, that that seems to be the two sides of things and then also like the quantum you know the quantum is considered the very very small right like there's like there's like particles and waves uh at such a small level that like they're traveling forwards and backwards in time and they operate on completely different levels than that which is you know physical or or you know our our world that is governed by the laws of physics as we know them in this reality that at a certain level after you get smaller than like the first hydrogen molecule is you end up in this like the laws of the universe are fundamentally different and the general the general thing is is if you think you understand quantum physics or quantum mechanics you don't because it's so crazily out there right so um i don't know how the quantum and that faster than light thing works because at some level, you're, you're going to be merging those together. Like it's an entirely different kind of physics, according to Stephen Greer, because, you know, you can take at least as far as, you know, the stories go from these, you know, the military leaks and Stephen Greer and all these people is that like they're taking their UFOs or their, their, their spaceships and they're moving them faster than light in some way. And in doing that, they're kind of like, I don't know if they're entering the quantum world or entering into a different kind of world, but the those kinds of um, like, you know, we've got quantum physics rules. We've got this, you know, the standard models, the general relativity rules. And then you've got, I guess, I don't know if it's here or here or where or all over, you know, it's like a sphere around all those, over. right. Yeah. Um, that like has just a different set of laws and a different way of, but I imagine that when we tap into that world, like, and actually identify it, like publicly that there will be some sort of unifying factor where we'll be able to see how the quantum becomes the the general relative the i don't know how to describe it other than like this world that is governed by gravity and stuff like i think we'll we'll find out how those fit together and that'll probably change everything for us and it'll also probably give us a lot more clear understanding and access to the you know the council of 12 and all these other beings that, that you and other channelers have access to yeah, and the, what kept coming in, kept coming in. And I listened to, I forgot, Joe Rogan had one of those UFO uh, guys on. I, I don't oh, know what his a, name was. He's, he's had a few of who's them. The, uh, you, yeah, who's the guy that from 1960s or 50s or was it the 1960s was in the um, Area 51 area? Yeah, the uh, S4. Um, oh, shoot. Yeah. He's he, right on the tip of my tongue. I just Ron watched this movie the or other day. Something. Anyway, and then the guy that did the um, documentary, he's been on a couple times. Fascinating interview, right? But I so wanted to be on that interview because I wanted to explain to them the perspective of these beings in the, in the craft. Because here's what they're doing. The only reason that we aren't yet capable of understanding how they're doing it is because we aren't holding that frequency yet. We don't understand how you can actually literally intend 
to move your frequency into a high enough frequency that you, that you dissolve and that you literally move into a different dimensional field, which is what they're doing. So they're, they're morphing into different dimensional fields like this. We see it as going away, but they're, in, they're, they're literally moving their energies, even a, even a form. That's how, they, that's how they come in and out of dimensional fields. They intend to increase the frequency of whatever they're in, just like this instantaneously, into a speed that is so fast that it literally pulls them out of the third dimension into a different dimension, back into a third dimension, just like this. And they're controlling it by intention, by an energetic intention. And they are, I mean, because if you think about it, again, I am not science-based, but from what they tell me, if you speed up energy, it, does, it, it, it disappears. So if you, if you take something and spin it really fast, it will disappear. It, will go, it won't be there any longer, right? If you, if you take an energetic frequency of some sort, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, it'll, it will dissolve into a different dimensional field or frequency. And so that's what they're doing. And that's what we have capable, we're, we're capable of doing that as soon as we understand how to do it. That's what mm -hmm. they're doing. They're just spinning a form that looks dense, out of density, back into density through dimensional fields, and it looks like it's disappearing. Right. It's literally just shifting energy. That's so fascinating. And the, the, I think the guy you were talking about was Bob Lazar. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and Jeremy Corbell. Jeremy Corbell is the guy who made the movie. Yeah, um, And I thought that was, you know, I, what was especially interesting I found was, you know, between Stephen Greer and his, what he's shared, and then what Bob Lazar shared, it seems like they've got two, well, there's probably a lot of different ETs and UFOs that are here, uh, but the ones that Bob Lazar described was that they were creating like a gravitational feel, like the, the way that they would go invisible was they would just bend the light around the ship so that no one could see it. But then they also, he also described that the way that they would fly was that it would actually create like a gravitational field that would, it's kind of like the way that he explained it was like, you know, if you take a bowling ball and you put it on a bed and then you push down on the bed over here, that like the bowling ball will roll towards it. So he was, he was saying that the ship would create a gravitational field um, and then they would just push on the proverbial bed, you know, wherever they wanted to go and the ship would just sort of fall into, so it, instead of having gravity just always going down, they'd have like the gravity is stronger above them and then the ship would be falling up like really fast. Um, and it's a very different, you know, ex expression and explanation than what, uh, Stephen Greer describes because Stephen Greer would would say it more like the way that that you did of like they're spinning this thing faster and faster until you know they pop into another uh, and yeah another dimension or another state like faster than light where they're outside of the light spectrum you can't see them and then they can move very very quickly so maybe it's a combination of both and maybe those are like stepping stones as well of like how advanced of a species you are, right? Like uh, on the first like base oh. level of flying ships, maybe you're manipulating the gravity field. And then the next level you're, you know, popping in and out of dimensions and shooting across the, you know, the, the galaxy or the universe. Well, when I was writing my book, one of the things I learned, which I found fascinating is the challenge it is for these beings to move themselves and the craft down into a dimensional field that is physical because they're, they actually have to intentionalize their energetic field to be slow enough to where they're being physical. Because from what, what my understanding is, from what, I've, from what my take on all of this is, is that they're actually not physical in the same way that we see them physically, other than that they bring themselves into a the low enough third dimensional frequency where we can now experience them. But it's a choice, they're actually doing that. So the craft that we see, the aliens that they've seen, the, all the physicality of it, they have chosen to move themselves down into a low enough frequency. It kind of seems mind boggling and like, why did they do that and how do they do that? But they can manipulate energy on, in, like the way we don't quite understand. And so they literally, and, and, it, and it takes, imagine you trying to, Increase the bo your body's frequency to where it sort of becomes light. The amount of, of, of energy that would take, right, for you to do that, let's just say you knew how to do it and it came kind of easy, but then to hold yourself in that high frequency and long enough to where you were in that higher dimensional field not seen would take a lot of energy. 
it's the same thing for these beings that are sort of bringing themselves down into a lower dimensional field. But what happens, they told me, and this is just what, I, what, I, what they explained to me, is that many times they can get pulled down into this third dimensional field and almost sucked in. And then it's like, oh, they're in, right? They, the craft kind of gets sucked in and then they get stuck in it. Mm. Um, and they can't, they can't get themselves back out fast enough, if that makes sense. So they get caught, so to speak. Um, so I think a lot of the Area 51 craft were sort of caught because for whatever reason, they didn't shift fast enough out of the dimensional field before they were caught. Um, but again, it's kind of, it's, it's just, there's just so much to it and we'll never really know until we're, you know, understanding it from that, as a higher perspective species, you know? Um, but it is really fascinating. Uh, and it's all about manipulating energy. That's all, that's what it is. It's manipulating energy and understanding how to manipulate energy be way beyond the, the light speed. Uh, I mean, that's nothing. That's, that's kindergarten to what these huh. beings can do. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's preschool. Uh, that's nice. physical. We're, we're, phys we're in third dimension. So everything's physical to us still. So light, need, light speed is physical. It's right. only that's because we can, that's all we can see. Right. And that's like the limit to the, I think to the, like that, which is physical. Like once you get faster than that, then you start getting into all the, like the non-physical multidimensional, everything like that. And that's, that's very exciting. I can it is. Say. How do you measure it though? Right? Like that's the piece. How, 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 how do they measure it or how do they, I just love that it's coming out now and that, that there's video of these crafts sort of like, oh, you just know, shooting and, around. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. I just love it. It's so exciting because you can't dispute, you know, what we, what we can see. Um, <laughs> well, you can, well, you can, but it's going to become overwhelmingly obvious That's eventually. True. It's, you know, That's I mean, true. there's still, I mean, even probably people listening to this, you know, there's probably going to still be some skeptics, people being like, oh, come on, UFOs, are you, are you serious? Yeah. Right. And, and it's like at some at some point, I mean, now we have the Pentagon starting to release, you know, UFO videos and that kind of thing. And there might be a setup for some sort of hoax alien attack. We don't know. There's a whole conversation about that. But the, the point being that, like, the moment, I think, like, what, what it seems to me is that on, a, on some level, you know, it's like certainly there's, you know, control systems and stuff in place, you know, manipulating humanity and human consciousness. Sure. I think that, you know, I, I, I like to at least um, stand in or believe in the idea that the entire universe or the, the, the beyond the universe, the mind of God, the, you know, the force that created all things is inherently benevolent. And that th even like the difficulties that we're going through right now are all a part of us like learning and growing into a greater species, even if they're really, really difficult, even if there's controls in imposed on us, that it's part of this evolution process for us to get there because the thing is is like once we get to that point where that alien technology is available to us um it is going to rapidly change life on earth forever right like we're going to have the flying vehicles the free energy the limitless energy the ability to travel in you know to different solar systems and and potentially dimensions and and uh you know galaxies and stuff like that and i feel like there's almost like you know we often talk about you know the kind of the global quarantine and not and I don't mean just the uh just because of coronavirus but that like humans are kind of like limited and trapped here and I feel like you know it's like what happens in any movie ever where the bad guy gets the limitless energy device right like Iron Man is a great example or whatever right like or any of those Marvel movies is they use it to try and like destroy the world and so my concern is like I if I was like you know looking at the universe from the mind of God's perspective, I would be like, yeah, those humans shouldn't be able to leave their planet until they can have some sense of harmony because they're going to spread their disease of their, you know, their greed and gluttony and fear based mentality all over the universe. And we don't want that. So they're on lockdown, you know, whatever it takes <laughs> until they can figure that out. But like, we're going through that process right now of like, as we awaken, as we heal, as we, discover the truth of who we are that like those kinds of things can start to come out and after they do it's a whole new way it's a whole new world for all of us and 
that's both, I think, very scary and exciting because I, I do, you know, have a concern of like, if everyone suddenly had a free energy, like a limitless energy device today, well, certainly that would be great for like most people, like powering their houses and doing, you know, whatever, you know, like we, we, could, we could do wonderful things with it. But there would also be people who are very twisted and very angry and who would use that, that technology to create massive explosions or to, to, you know, do, to get revenge on evil ex-partners and like just, just weird, stupid, low density stuff. And so I feel like we're just not allowed to have that technology yet. And we have to demonstrate our proficiency as a species, like the responsibility to be able to wield such a technology before we can actually attain it, you know? Absolutely. I mean, basically what you're saying is we have to wait till we're holding higher states of consciousness in order to be able to access these, uh, these abilities, these, these ways of being the, the, the technology, the gifts, the abilities that we have, that we already have access to. We just don't realize we have access to it yet because we're not capable. Like you said, we're not capable of being responsible, so to speak with it. Um, and you know, you can see that there are, there are, there's a distinct kind of split in the road right now of like a 3d field and a 5d field. Let's just call it right. Like higher states of consciousness and just remaining in this like third dimensional state of consciousness. And like, there's technologies that are being developed in a third dimensional timeline, right? that would create more like AI, for instance, right? It would create more chaos. It would create more destruction. It would create more, more, more density. It just would. And so as we shift into these higher states of consciousness, or let's just call it like a 5d timeline or whatever timeline you want to call it, there are technologies, abilities, gifts, all of this stuff that's standing there on the road waiting for us like little shops. Right. Um, but we have to be holding the frequency that will enable the earth plane and humanity to be able to use it in that higher state so that it doesn't pull us back down in the lower states. Um, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And what they've, what, what I've been shown many times is this, It's, there's almost like this energetic pull from a 3D over to a 5D or, you know, from one timeline over to a different timeline that will allow us to do exactly what you're saying from a place of expansion and freedom and like, oh my God, look at what we have access to and abundance and unity and like all of these ways of being that unshackle us from this third dimensional greed and, and murder and chaos and, and that kind of energetic way that we've been living for so long. Um, so there is a massive split and pull and even in the scientific community, it's going to start to pull, it's going to start to move um, into these higher states of consciousness. It just is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, before we, before we bring this podcast to a close, I, I want to ask you one more question. And this is maybe one of the most exciting ones because you talk a lot about ascension and you've already said too, like we have access to these states even though we don't know it yet. And I, I, you know, this is a conversation that I've been having with a lot of my guests so far on this podcast, which is like, you know, the subject of ascension, what does it mean to you? And what does it look like in that, you know, in like an, an ascended human state, you know, because even the, the word ascension really for the most part was really coined by the bible and the story of jesus you know moving into this ascended like light body state of state of being state of consciousness so is that reflected in your understanding or, or what does ascension mean to you it's pretty simple for me there's no there's no final stage that you get to i don't see ascension as like oh i've made it um right i don't see ascension like that it's a, it's a it's just a it's it's a journey it's an experience it's a process of moving from one state of consciousness to another to another to another to another like you're going up a an elevator right and you're just your bot it's your body so it's not you you are already a higher state of consciousness you're already higher consciousness so it's not actually you that's ascending 
it's a physical body that is ascending and taking you into higher states of consciousness. So you as a higher consciousness get to experience lower states of consciousness from than you, but higher states of consciousness in every now, if that makes sense. So you drop in as a higher consciousness, you're in a physicality that's very dense and ascension is the body continuing to hold higher frequencies, allowing you the higher consciousness to be higher states of consciousness, evolve on some sort of physical field in order to be higher states of consciousness. So you have access to more, you get to tap into more things, you get to, all while you are in sort of physicality for quite some time. Like, are, will we eventually ascend into light bodies? Perhaps, perhaps not, right? Is a 5D physical body very different than this body? Absolutely. But is it still form? Absolutely. Um, time frame? Who knows when that, like, you know, people like to call it like 5D whatever, consciousness field, whatever that is. Who knows when that will happen? But ascension to me is literally like I'm just walking upstairs. Like I'm just, I'm just shifting frequencies. And, and that's it. And I have, there's no destination. You know, when you have a destination, you're going to suffer. I got to get there. I got to get there. I got to get there. Where are you going? Right. Why are you going anywhere? You just be in the now, let your body continually move you into higher states of consciousness. Cause this is all just a game, right? This is all just an illusion. This is all just you as a higher consciousness playing in this. And it's allowing you to experience different states of consciousness in physicality. And so ascension is just that. It's just, it's collectively and individually moving from one frequency to the next frequency, to the next frequency, to the next frequency, energetically. Mm. That's how I see it. And it's, and the more you are kind of aware of this by feeling, it's all feeling, it's all energy. So you have to feel it. The more you kind of start to really tap into what's happening to you on an energetic level, you'll start to feel yourself shift. You'll recognize things, you'll notice things, you'll feel differently, your triggers won't be the same, your relationships won't, you know, everything starts to change and shift because your frequency is shifting in your body. And so your resonance is shifting, your energetic field, you know, it starts to shift. You don't feel the same towards things. You don't do the same things. You don't say the same things. Things just start to shift. That's mm -hmm. ascension. Beautiful. That's how I see it. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, and here Lori, we are. <laughs> here we are. Lori, I've had just an amazing time talking with you. And I think this is one of the most smoothest flowing podcasts yet. Uh, and it was beautiful because we started, you know, with like letting go and surrender and trusting. And it was just like, you know, normally I, you know, I kind of have these notes that I, you know, take beforehand of like, oh, things we can talk about. And like we covered all of them, but I hardly even had to look at the paper. And even when I did, it wasn't really like a let me now move into the, you know, it was just, it was so right. effortless. So I just want to say was, thank you. This was, this is really special. And I know um, I had a really good time. Yeah. So, so for anybody who's listening and they want to like learn more about you and like tune into your website and your, your work and YouTube and everything, like how can people find you? Um, the best way to find me is through YouTube. Just my name, Lori Ladd, L-O-R-I-E-L-E-D-D. -D. YouTube, Instagram is Lori underscore Lad, and then Facebook, Lori Lad. My website you can go to as well, but I basically post almost daily videos on um, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So that's the best way to to um, to connect with me right now, which I would Beautiful. love to connect with all of you. So yeah, awesome. Jordan, it's been so fun. I love all your work. Thank you for everything that you have been doing for such a long time at such a young age. You were so young when you started. You were a wee little one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah, I'm an old man now. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was, it was such a blessing to have you on, and I'm excited for the next time we do this. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's, that's a wrap.